Hi, so in this short video I just want to show you a technique I find useful for switching on and off debug information about various actors in a scene. Um, so if you look at the simple scene we've got here, we've got a couple of test actors. We've got this little box here which I've, if I walk up to it switches on a green light and that goes off when I walk away. And we've got this cone which is a switch which opens this door. So again if I walk close to it, door opens and after about five seconds that should close again on its own. Now there might be times when you're doing a much more complicated level than this that you just want to very quickly see otherwise hidden information about certain actors. So the way I do that is if I hold down Alt and that, that gets the mouse cursor to appear and click on the actors it will show me whatever I want. So for this box I might want to see you know how close do I need to get before the light comes on. So show me the collision around it basically, the collision sphere. So if I click and there you go that will toggle on the display of this collision geometry so I can see where I need to get, you know, make sure that's the right size and everything. And if I hold Alt again to get the cursor to come back, click on the same actor, and that will take that debug info away. And the same goes for this little switch over here. So if I hold Alt to get the, put the cursor, click on the cone, it will draw a line to the door that that switch operates, which might be useful if you've got a lot of switches and doors in the same room. But like I say, you can have this show you anything you want. So Alt, click again, and that will switch that information off. And um, how you set that up to work is what we're going to do in this video. Right, so to get this to work, we first need to set up a couple of new inputs. So go to Edit, Project Settings, and under the Input section, I want to create uh, these two new ones. So one of them is going to be that pressing and releasing Alt shows and hides the cursor. So New Action Mapping, I'm going to call that Show Cursor. And the key for that is going to be set to Left Alt. You can use Shift or Control or Command if you want to. Then the second input mapping I want is something like Show Debug Info. And that's going to be set to left mouse button, so a click basically, and the Alt key. So whichever key I use up here, which is why I said use Shift, Control, Alt or Command, because then you can have the combination on the second input. So I think what we're going to do, we, we're going to wire it up so that we press the Alt key down to get the cursor to appear, and then while we're doing that, click on something to run some function that does whatever we want. So our inputs I'm going to make a player controller for. Player controller blueprints, if you're not familiar with them, are just like um, the best place for you to keep all of your input in, in, in one place. So we'll create a new player controller. I'm going to call that my player controller. And then in there, we can use these two inputs that we just set up. So on the event graph tab, delete the things that are there already because we don't need them. And then we can use our new input actions. So it will have input action, show cursor. So when we press this key, Alt in our case, remember, we want to do a set show mouse cursor, which is something that's built into all player controllers. So tick that so the mouse cursor becomes visible. And then when we release the key again, we want to do a set show mouse cursor and untick that so it's back to false. Then the other input action we made, which was what input action, something like show debug info. Yeah, show debug info. What we want this to do, and remember this is Alt plus left click, find out what the mouse cursor is over. So which actor in the scene are we currently hovering over, if that makes sense. And the way we would do that is with a get hits result under cursor by channel in our case and we're going to say it's the camera channel. Now what that will do is basically do a line trace from the camera's position through the mouse pointer and say, what does that line trace hit? So basically, yeah, what is the cursor pointing at? It might not be pointing at anything, but we can check that by taking this hit result, doing a break hit result, and then checking the value of this blocking hit boolean, which is a true or false, did, did this trace hit anything? Or in other words, is there anything under the, under the pointer? So we'll put a branch in, which is B click, and wire this up so that we're checking that blocking hit. Right, now what we need to do next is call a function which we haven't actually created yet. We're going to create an interface which says that, which we can apply to whichever actors we want and give them a certain function. You'll see in a second. So back in the content browser, right click under blueprints, create a blueprint interface, and I'm going to call this iDebug. The reason is I just start all of my interfaces with, with a capital I. And then in here, there should be one function already, just called new function zero. I'm going to rename that do debug click. If you're not familiar with interfaces, 
I'll just do a quick explanation. We can set up as many functions as we want in here and they can have as many inputs and outputs as we want, but we can't give them any implementation, so I can't put anything following this uh, function starting node like you would in any other blueprint. What happens is we tell whichever blueprints we want that they have to use this interface and then those blueprints get to set up what they want this function to do. It's really handy. So we'll just save that. And then in our player controller again, what we can now do is say, right, if it was true that we did, um, that there, there is something under the mouse pointer, whichever actor that was, tell it to run that do debug click function that we just set up. And this is going to assume that that function exists. It might not. If the actor that was under the pointer, oops, doesn't use this interface and doesn't have that function, this will just do nothing. It won't give you an error. It won't crash. It will just do nothing at all. And what we want to do is make sure the actors we're interested in do have this function. So let's do that now. Just compile and save that. Then back in the content browser, we'll start with this little box here. So I've got a blueprint, which is that. It, um, which one is it? A uh, light actor. That's it. And yeah, there's some things already set up in here. So let me just show you what this blueprint is. If we go on the viewport, it's just a cube mesh with a collision sphere around it, which if you look on the right is hidden in game, so you can't normally see that. And then also in this blueprint, we've got the light component that comes on. And the idea is when something enters the collision sphere, if it's the player, the light comes on. And then when something leaves the collision sphere, if it's if it's the player, the light goes off again. And you can see that on the event graph here. So something begins overlapping the sphere. If it's the player, set the light's visibility to true. And then when something leaves the collision sphere, if it was the player, set the light's visibility back to false again. And I showed you that at the start. It basically is just this. Okay, so what we want to do now is apply that interface that we just made to this um, blueprint. So go to class settings. Then over on the right here, you'll see it says no interfaces at the moment. We can add an interface here and just search for that ID bug that I just made. Now what that will do is add this function to the blueprint. Well, it will actually be an event because we don't have any outputs on it, but you'll see what I mean. So if we go back to light actor, we can right click here now and have event do debug. Like if I can spell event properly, we will anyway. So event do debug click. And what do we want this to do? So this is what this actor will do when we hold alt and left click on it, basically. So we'll have a weird little node, first of all, called the flip flop. And what a flip flop does, if you've never used one, would the first time this runs, it will it will fire whatever you've wired up to output A. Then the next time it runs, it will fire whichever's wired up to B. Then the next time after that, A, then B, then A, then B. And it'll just keep flip flopping between them. So you can use it as like a toggle. What we want to do when we run A, we want to say take the collision sphere that we've got and make it visible or set set it set hidden in game to false so that it is visible in the game. And then on the B pin, we want the exact opposite. So we'll get another set hidden in game from our collision sphere, and this time tick that. So this should, first time we run this, it will show the sphere, next time hide it, then show, then hide, and so on. Now to test that, we just need to do one more thing. We need to take our player controller that we created and tell, tell Unreal that that's the player controller that we want it to use. So back in the project settings, if you've closed this window, remember it's just edit project settings under maps and modes, expand selected game mode, and I can say what player can control a class I want, and it's going to be the my player controller that we made. So now let's test this out. Play. Right, so there you go. Holding Alt brings up the mouse, and then left clicking on something runs whatever we said that function does, which as you can see here, it shows the collision sphere, so we can see how close we need to get. And then hold Alt again to get the pointer up. Click on the actor, and the flip-flop will do the opposite in our case and switch that thing off. And then you can keep toggling that on and off as you want. But you see what I mean with this. You can use it to show and hide little bits of dev info, you know, debug stuff, as you want. Now, one thing I have noticed, when you first hold down Alt and you're moving the pointer around, you're still also, you know, looking around with the camera. If you just left click anywhere, it stops that happening and now you're just using the pointer, which as you know by now will disappear when we let go of Alt, and then you can click and carry on playing the game. So that's really all that is and how that works. The only thing I need to know is I'll show you how I did that thing where the the switch 
you know, has a line drawn to say which door that it operates. So, what we do, we've got the switch blueprint there, and this already has some stuff set up as well. It has a reference to the door blueprint, and all the door blueprint is is just a simple cube with a timeline to say that it slides backwards and forwards. Well, it's got two functions. You've got this open door function, which causes it to slide one way, then there's a delay for however long, and then there's another function called closed door, which slides it back the other way again. Um, I'll show you inside that blueprint at the end if you're interested. Now what we want to do here is the same thing we did in the little light actor blueprint. We go to class settings, add interface, choose the iDebug interface, and then when we compile, that will event that will then have given us this same event. It was called uh, do debug info or something like that. Event do debug click, that was it. And here I'm going to do the same thing, or a very similar thing, in that we start with a flip-flop. And on the A pin, we want to show some information. And on the B pin, we want to hide it. Now, what I want to do here is do a draw debug line. This basically draws a line in 3D space on the screen if you've never seen this. And you can say, where does the line start? Where does it end? What color? And all the you know the rest of it like that. And it wants to start wherever this blueprint itself is, wherever the switch is. So line start will just be get actor location. And if we don't wire anything into the target pin, as you can see, it will use self. So the, the location of this blueprint itself. It's going to end at another actor's location. Which is just going to be the door that I got set up. So we'll connect that in. I mean, yeah, I've completely skipped over how this door was set up, but it's not really the point of the video. So that's okay. For line color, I'm going to go with red. Duration, I'm just going to put some high number in 99999 because we're going to remove this line using the B pin, as you'll see in a second. And then for thickness, I'll put 10. And then to hide this line again, all we do is go, uh, where is it? Flush persistent debug lines. This will take all of your debug geometry off. So it's okay for me here because this is, ever, this is going to be the only thing on the screen. But if you've got lots of different lines, that will hide all of them. So you might have to do this slightly different way, like have a lower duration in here or something. So let's compile and save that. And if I play this now, we can do that same thing over here. So hold Alt, click on that. That draws the line to the door that operates. And then if we hold Alt and click again, that takes her off. So that's really all I want to show you. That's like what I think is a nice, useful little way to like hide and show certain information while the game is running just to help you develop things, to help you get things debugged, basically. You can put anything you want in those functions, so yeah, pretty useful. Now, just at the end, I did say I'd show you the door blueprint just for completeness, so you can see how that works. So, um, where is that? Yeah, door. So, as I said, all this is, is literally nothing but a cube that's been, you know, squashed and stretched a bit to look like that. Then on its event graph, we just have a timeline you may have done things like this before, where we have one function which plays the timeline forward, this is open door, and another function which, well, an event which plays the timeline in reverse called closed door, and all that's doing is setting the relative location of that um, cube to between where it started, so 0, 0, 0, and offset by 300 down the x-axis, according to some timeline. And the timeline is just a simple... Uh, float that's animating from 0 to 1 over the course of 1 second. So what will happen is, because that's plugged into this linear interpolate, which again I think most people would have used, it just um, interpolates between this A and B over the course of 1 second, and then whatever comes out of here is used as a location for the cube. But, I mean, as I say, that's not really the point of this video. I can go into more detail on that if people want me to. So um, anyway, yeah, I think that about wraps that up. I hope you find that useful.